Good evening, it's 7.30, it's Leicester Fun TV, my name is Phil, welcome to tonight's show and tonight we are going to be joined by Dean Hammond, ex-Leicester City player, played for us around 2013-2016, get your views and get your comments in and as ever, we can pose your questions through to Dean Hammond, ex-Leicester. <laughs> Yes, good evening there. It's Leicester Fan TV and here we are joined as usual by Jamie. Hi Jamie, how are you? Evening all, how the devil are we? Are we all good? I'm good Jamie, have you recovered from Saturday yet? Oh that was absolutely fantastic, weren't it with Danny Simpson? Just wish he'd bought his medal, that'd have been absolutely fantastic if he just had his medal hanging around his neck. It'd have been I did, brilliant. Like, but I did that, like I did like it when he said, come on, come on Danny, can you go and fetch it out of the safe? And he was like, yeah. No. No, mate, I'm not <laughs> going to do that. <laughs> Come on then, Jamie, yeah. talk us through what, right. what's going on tonight. We've got Dean Hammond. Dean Hammond played for Leicester for uh, just over two years. Like you say, he came in August of 13, came for undisclosed fee. We might be able to ask him out later on how much it was actually, how much he came for. Uh, he went on loan October of 2015 on the Premiership winning season, Was uh, went to Sheffield United and he stayed there and signed for them at the end of the season. Um, it was part of the Great Escape year. Uh, it was part of the year before the championship side as well, when we won the league in uh, 2014. He played 45 games and scored an important goal, one goal, which was important against Wigan in the championship, when we won, won the championship. So I think we better bring him on and um, see what he's got to say. Now, let's hopefully Dean will join us. We have been having a few tech issues tonight. And uh, that looks like a tech issue to me on screen there. Can you believe that? Oh, no. We have been playing around. Dean, I don't know if you can hear us. We Oh, look at that. Don't you love technology, Jamie? We've been having some fun and games. And there you go. He's oh, gone. Right Hopefully, he'll, he'll click back in, won't he? Yeah. So, he did. He joined us. Dean joined us in 2013. He was at Southampton. Well, and then he, he had a loan spell at Brighton. But I think Southampton is one of his uh, big other clubs. His main clubs, yes. Yes. And then he went, like I say... He missed out on the uh, Premiership winning season. Um, he went on loan. He played one game in the Cup game for us, but then he went on loan to Sheffield United. And at the end of that season, he finally signed for Sheffield United. And is he is he back again? He's Well, do you know what? He's clicked back in, but we can't see him. So, Dean, I don't know if you can hear us. I can hear you. Can you hear me? He can hear us. Yeah, we can hear we, you. We can hear you, Dean. We can't see you. <laughs> I'm not in a dark <laughs> room, honestly. I can hear you. So, we've oh, well, got... We've got a black screen. Well, I don't, yeah. Dean, all I can ask you is, could I ask you to try and click back in one more time and see if that works? I don't know why yeah, we've video gone. I leave and come back in? Thank you so much. Yeah. So Dean's just having a few technical issues there, but like we say, we'll get him on there. And let's get some, let's start off, Jamie, with some questions and things from there. Um, Sean says we can all say we were on the same show as Simo. That's Sean who was on with us yes. on Saturday. Um uh, Yes. Josh Sportser has put evening, guys. Josh has put a new video evening, for us up on YouTube. Uh, you watched it, didn't you, Jamie? Yes. I'll tell you what, it was very good, very enjoyable. I had to put it on slow mo because you've done half speak quick, but that's I've been told that's how the youth of the today speak. But it was a good video, though. I did enjoy it. Absolutely. Uh, Adam is saying, Dino, Dino, let's see if he's, he's just logging back in now. So let's see if it, we can. MTS says, I think he's got to put. <laughs> yeah. I've got to put 50p in there. I tell you what, I can see him now. I can hear, can hey. hear you. Dean, can you hear us now? <laughs> yes, we can hear I him. I can hear you now, yeah. Thank Yay. you. Good, that's good, isn't it? Finally thanks. got there in the end. Thanks for joining us, Dean. Um, Jamie, have you got a question to kick us off? Yeah, the first question I was would, would ask you, what did Nigel Pearson say to you to make you leave Southampton to actually come to Leicester? How did he make you, well, let, get you to leave Southampton to come to us? Well, um, one thing when I was at Southampton, um, obviously Nigel had been there previously. So a lot of the staff um, knew Nigel, um, spoke very well of him. 
Um, he just he just sold me the club. He sold me the opportunity. Um, I wasn't going to play at Southampton. I just had a year on loan at Brighton. I come back um, where we missed out on the the playoff semi final, similar to Leicester. Um, and he just sold me the club. He's, I mean, and Nigel, I've got so much respect for. He's just um, he's just a, he's just a good bloke. Um, he spoke the truth. He was honest with me. He actually said, "Look, I'm not." He brought me in more for my experience, more for to help balance the squad. He was open about that, um, and it was down to me to obviously try and win the position uh, within the team. But no, he was. Um, I knew I was aware of Leicester. I was aware of the quality in the squad. Um, it was a club that I'd always fancied playing for, um, and he just he, he made it quite clear the club were going for promotion. So it was something I wanted to be part of. So. Uh, there was no, never any doubt in my mind. And once I spoke to Nojo and I came up, negotiations were pretty quick. Had a medical, I'd never had any previous injuries. And it, it was it was, it was done fairly quickly. That's all right. And also, that championship winning season, did you get some point in that season? When did you realise that you were going to be like champions and get promoted? Or was it right to the very end? You just kept going and thinking one game at a time, one game at a time. Or was there a point that you actually knew that you were going to win the championship quite easily? Uh, I wouldn't say I never knew we were going to win it quite easily, but it was quite apparent when I joined that. Um, I think when I first joined, there was a little bit of an imbalance in the squad. There was a few players that, that Nigel were trying to um, change, um, just through personality maybe, because um, there was so much quality in the squad and so much um, ability, but they just needed a little bit of experience myself coming in um gary taylor fletcher coming in kevin is coming in not the most exciting signings in the world i'm not i'm not gonna lie but it it helped potentially other players become better players and maybe understand where we needed or how to get promoted so i knew my role within the in the group um but it was evident to me you know once a team was settled once we were scoring goals and once the partnership jamie vardy and david nugent had you know, the, the, the squad was way too strong for the championship. And we, we proved that with the, the points tally we got and the way we won games. So it was a brilliant year. Brilliant year. I mean, even you notched with a goal towards the end of the season, didn't you? Against Wigan. Michael, was that a last minute winner? A last minute equaliser, wasn't it? I think it was. Something like that. Uh, it wasn't the last minute. It was the last minute. Oh. I think it was last, well, the last minute equaliser. But yeah, uh, I probably yeah. celebrated it like it was the last minute. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't get many, so. Uh, <laughs> but no, it's, nah, it was always nice to score. Obviously, my only goal for Leicester, um, and it was. I think of that that game. We were on a, a long unbeaten run, so it felt quite important. Even though probably the point wasn't that important because we were going to win the league anyway. Um, but it felt quite important for us as a squad because um, Nigel would change the team a lot that evening, and players coming in, we wanted to maybe potentially prove a point and show that we were we were good players as well because the, the team in that year was very, very consistent um, because it kept winning in between tweets. So why change it? Uh, Andy Meadows asks Dean, he says, who was the best player you played with while you were at Leicester? At Leicester? Yeah. Um, it's a difficult one because there's so many good players I could mention, you know, but I'd have to, if you if you ask me, I'd have to say Jamie Vardy, just because he was so effective in the way he plays the game and what he does. There's no one else like him. Uh, you couldn't replace him. He's so quick. Um, his finishing is brilliant. Um, he rarely misses chances. Um, and he's just such an effect player. And, and, and he's such a team player as well. And plus, he's just a great bloke as well. So I'd have to say Jamie Vardy. Were you surprised, Dean, at all, then, that he went on into the Premier League and, and has notched more and more goals? Did you see that coming? Was I surprised, sorry. Did yeah, you did you? I mean, to be fair, I mean, we a lot of fans hoped he would do well in the Premier League, but that was a, another big step up for him. Did, were you surprised at all at that, or did you think, no, he got it in him? I was, honestly, I know it sounds easy to say now, but I wasn't surprised, because Jamie is such a, a confident player person a confident player there's no fear in him uh, and he just he just he strikes fear into defenders whatever level he's playing at when you've got pace like that um and his movement as well and he can keep consistently running at that pace no i wasn't surprised because he, he's he just gets himself an opportunity and um, you, you couldn't name one defender that want to play against him so 
I knew he would do well. Did I imagine he would do as well as he did? Maybe not, but he, he's just so, like I say, effective. There's, there's a cracking question from Jordan Williams. What was Casper like in the dressing room after his goal against Yeovil went to uh, Chris Wood instead? Did he have a bit of a moan about that? Say that again. What was Casper like? What was Casper like in the dressing room? We all know he scored because we've all seen the TV replays. It was over the line, but it was given to Chris Wood instead when he yeah. came in the rebound. Did Casper have a bit of a moan about it? I can't quite hear you. I, I've... Oh, say... Sorry. Dean, it's fine. When, do you remember the game when Leicester got a last-minute goal against Yeovil and it was Casper uh, Schmeichel got it in, but it was given to Chris Wood? Yeah. We, no, I remember that game, yeah. Somebody's asked, what was Casper like in the dressing room after that? The goal was taken away from him. <laughs> what do you think he was like? <laughs> <laughs> was you were in there. there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, let's put it that way. He, he, uh, yeah, he wasn't too happy. He, claimed, he kept playing the he kept playing the goal, but it was uh, it was it was it was good for the lads because we could wind him up like anything. So um, <laughs> you know, it, was, it, was, it was it was good fun. But no, Casper's Casper's a good lad as well, and he he would have enjoyed the banter, and it was good fun. But yeah, uh, Woody claimed that Casper claimed it, and we'll give it to Woody. Well, I tell you, all all, all the, the fans gate. All the fans gave it to Casper. I was there. I remember the match. We all said, we all walked out saying, that's definitely Casper's goal. Um, a change, just to change the pace to nowadays, briefly, and then we'll go back to Leicester. Adrian says, are you looking forward to making your debut for Worthing once again? Dean, What? What's you've sort of quit football a couple of seasons ago, and then you're back now, maybe. I know you've not actually, but just couldn't keep away from it. Uh, well, I've probably retired about two, three times now. I must have. Been. I yeah. just retired when I obviously I left. <laughs> and I keep. It was the first time I must have been in about three years that uh, I had the itch. Um, I'd done the loan manager role at Leicester. I loved doing that. Um, the back operation, which put me out for five, six months. I had to come a bit of a forward dad and look after the kids. So obviously, I couldn't continue that, which is unfortunate. Uh, my friend that I used to play with is manager at work. He'd been bugging me and bugging me to try and come in and play. And I just thought, do you know what? I'll dust the boots. I just, to be fair, I didn't even have a pair of boots. I had to go and buy a pair of boots. Um, <laughs> and then just, I just joined in training. They're a really young squad in the league. So um, I like joining teams at the top of the league and doing well. So it was, it was <laughs> a, a no brainer. But it was. Uh, it was uh, um, well, it must be, it must be the shortest cover because for about three weeks, it's going to. Be involved for the game on the Saturday, and then obviously coronavirus happened, and the whole season got cancelled. So, who knows what's going to happen? I've been retired again. That's another time I've been retired. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, I was going. To, I'll, I'll ask my last question before we bring Tom in, Phil. How the man? Everyone would like to know about the Man U game when uh, we won five three. What was it like in the dressing room afterwards? I think. It, the Man United game, yeah, uh, after the game, it was a little bit surreal, really, because how many times do you, how many times do teams come back when they're 3-1 down to Man United? We're fresh in the Premier League. Um, you, you, you can remember the stars that were playing for Monday. day. Um, it was a hot day as well, which didn't help. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it's just... I think it just reinforced that we really that we could really compete at that level. And I know after that game, it's strange because we went on a really poor run after that. But it it was an amazing day, an amazing result. It helped us during the season when we were going through bad stages, when we were having a bit of bad form, when we weren't scoring goals, when we weren't picking up points when we could. We could reflect back on that result and go, come on, look, we've been United fine free. We've had a decent run before that. We belong in the Premier League. We're good players. We're uh, we're a good team. So no, it was it was great after the game in the dressing room, fantastic. And um, unfortunately, after that, we didn't go on a great run. But yeah, great memories. Really good memories. Brilliant. That's I'm good. gonna. I'm just gonna drop you out, Jamie. Now and bring in yeah, no Tom. Yep. So because we've been having a few technical issues, so hopefully Jamie will join us back later. But Tom, hopefully Tom Dean, you can still hear. Tom, fire away, 
Tom. Evening, Dino. If you can hear me. Do you want to ask your question, Tom? Yeah, I was going to say you played with some good players, Dino, over the years. Uh, what was it like to play with Esteban Cambiaso, such a, a huge name in the game? I can't quite hear you, but I'm, I heard you mention Esteban Cambiaso. So yeah. I'm guessing what you're asking. I'm going to have to kick you out, Tom, just for yeah, a minute. Tom, Dean, hopefully, you can, can you hear me now? Dean, hopefully, if I you can, can hear, hear me. Just about, yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, Tom was asking about Esteban yeah, Cambiasso. How, how was it playing with Esteban Cambiasso, Dean? Brilliant. Um, loved every minute of it. Um, obviously, a huge star. Um, knew of his reputation coming in. Um, first of all, I'd say, um, from a personal point of view, a great bloke. Uh, really nice man. Um, always had time to talk about football. Loved talking about football. Was passionate about football, even with his um, broken English, but got better and better. Um, but as a player, um, technically brilliant. Wasn't quick, um, but always seemed to have time on the ball. Um, his awareness was fantastic, and just learned a lot of him as as a professional as well. Knew. It sounds an easy thing, but he knew how important a match day was. And I know it sounds really simple, but some players can work too hard in training. I was probably guilty of that sometimes. <laughs> but he knew that how important a match day was. Um, and that's all that mattered. That was your performance. If you had to take it easy during the week, if you had to do your own personal thing, that was fine. But no, he was um, a winner as well. And he... He came to Leicester. Uh, he wanted to prove something, I think. I wanted, he wanted to prove that he could play in the English game. Um, he had a huge impact on myself and I, I believe the, in the dressing room as well and, and was one of the main reasons why we were successful in surviving that season. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think most fans would agree with you on that. Uh, Andy Medhurst asks you, who was the biggest joker in the Leicester dressing room while you were there, Dean? <laughs> Are you allowed to <laughs> say? Uh, <laughs> well, no. Talk us through. Who kept you entertained while you were there? Well, well, you couldn't sit still around the, around Jamie Vardy. Put it that way. He was um, <laughs> Vardy. Vardy was, was lively, um, but in a good way. Just, just, just full of energy. He's just full of energy. He's like a kid, really. Full of energy. He just walk. He's always up to something. Um, yeah. so Vardy definitely. Him and Nuge were. Him and Nuge were thick as thieves. So if if they were around together, you knew something was going on. Um, trying to think who else really. It was a good group of lads, and we all got along really well. It was. Um, Do you keep in touch with characters. them a little bit? Do you keep in touch with them, Dean? Many of yeah. them. Yeah, I speak, I speak to Macasia. I speak to Var. You know, I, 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 I speak to David Nugent. I see Nuge. Um, more, more the fact, more the fact that it helps that the um, the wives, my wife and their wives, are quite close. Um, so yeah, I still speak to a few of the lads. Um, it's difficult because I live down south now. They're still up there. I've changed careers. They're still in football. So we've got all got children. But yeah, I do speak to them. And, and um, it, yeah, so they, I'd say, yeah, we're friends. It's, it's a good friendship. Yeah, talk, Dean, what are you up to now at the moment? I've been looking at your Twitter today and seeing you doing keep fit bits and bobs. What, what's the plan at the moment? I know obviously we're in lockdown, but what's, what's going to keep you entertained over the next year or two? What's the plans? I'm still trying to find my feet, if I'm honest, um, since since I finished playing. Um, like I said, I did the loan role at Leicester and loved that. Um, but that had to change because, of, like I say, personal reasons. Um, but I've got my fitness. I've just started my own fitness business, um, which I love. I've always loved my fitness um, and got a passion for that, where I'd like to help younger fitness addicts or younger professional footballers coming through or older players that have finished that, um, need some focus or want to keep their fitness up after playing in their careers. So I, I would say that's my real aim at the moment. Um, and I'd love to, if possible, maybe I miss football a lot. So try and get back into football in some aspects, whether that's um, through the media work or um, coaching. I don't know. So I'd love to get back into football. Um, my wife's OK now, so I've got a bit more time on hand. So that, that would be what um, I'd like to do. Adams put a comment on here. He says, your fitness sessions are great and killers. 
<laughs> so he's obviously been using well, them and having. Well, that was my that was my main thing when I was a player. I was fit as anything, so um, I just try to keep that going. I, I love my fitness, and um, I, I think it's good for you mentally. It keeps you focused, so um, it's a good source of concentration for me. Tom's asking here, what was Wes Morgan like as a club captain for you? Brilliant. Um, Wes was um, led by example. So in his performances, um, in training, um, really, really approachable guy. Um, always had time for people. Wasn't a baller, wasn't a shitter, um, but gave his opinion um, in a calm way. I think that's what his main thing as captain. He was very calm and he was calm in his performances. And that that's what was his personality was. Funny guy as well. He really good company. Um, so yeah, I mean he's a club legend. What he's what he's achieved at the football club, but no, a great guy, Wes, and um, yeah, really, really respected captain. Uh, Ross has got a bit of a tricky question for you here, Dean. Obviously, we know that you, you're a big Southampton player and Leicester player in your time. Uh, what was it? What were your feelings on the nine nil win for Leicester against Southampton? <laughs> difficult. It was. It <laughs> yeah. was. It was a happiness, obviously, for Leicester. But obviously difficult to obviously seeing Southampton lose nine nil. But I mean, what a performance! I remember watching the game. I was at home. I was watching the game and just thinking. I always like to look at it and just look how well Leicester played. People look at it and go and pick faults in Southampton, but Leicester that night. I mean, the combinations, the attacking players were putting together, and how comfortable they look within the system. I mean, the manager, the way they've got them playing, especially that game, is. It's fantastic. I mean, you fans must love watching them every week, the way they play now and with the, the flair and the younger players coming through. It was, um, yeah, it was, a, it was bittersweet, really. Um, but you can look at it. Southampton have, have recovered from that, gone on a good run. Um, so it might have helped them in some respects. But no, amazing result. A, a great game to watch as well. Yeah, it was. And I mean, like you say, going back to the greatest escape season, Dean, that, that you were part of, um, I know you went out on loan later on in that season, didn't you? But you were part of that greatest escape Leicester side that na narrowly, well, sort of quite easily avoided the relegation in 2014-15. Did, did you ever think that they could go on and win the Premier League the season or so after? Look, I'm not going to sit here and lie and go, right, we sat there in three seasons and right, we're going to win the league this year. But yeah. it was, it was, it was it's strange because you think about it, you've got to give the club and the players so much credit because we started the pre-season without a manager. Nigel had left. Um, Craig Shakespeare was in charge. He'd done a fantastic job, job in um, the players loved Craig, so um, that was fine. But we didn't have a manager until Claudio came in. Um, we knew that we could compete in that level. We'd won the last, quite me if I'm wrong, I don't know, seven out of the last games in that first season in the Premier League to stay up. Yeah. So we knew that we were a good team in the Premier League now. We'd found our feet, um, had confidence. And confidence in football is everything. Honestly, it's everything. If you're playing football with confidence, you can be a better player, a better team. So we were we were aiming higher. We were... We, I think that, if I remember rightly, we were thinking we were going to try and push for Europe. That was the aim. Um, but then when you start winning games, you start winning games comfortably, um, you just think, OK, what could we achieve here? And I always say, it, the best thing that Claudio did when he came in was not change anything. That was his, that was his most intelligent decision because every new manager wants to buy loads of players, spend loads of money, change the training routine, change the setup, But... He was clever in the fact that I think he saw them results at the previous season when we won seven get out of nine and four. Do you know what? They might be onto something here. So he kept with it, and rightly so. So he gets just rewards as well. Uh, Zab's asking here, Dean. Zab says, uh, who was the best player you ever played against? Now, that doesn't have to be while you're at Leicester, just in your whole career. Is there some players you truly remember playing against, thinking, wow, what a, what a player? Yeah, I remember there's a, there's a few. I remember when I was a youngster at Brighton, we played West Ham in the FA Cup and I, I was played against um, Carlos Tevez, um, who was exceptional. Um, played against um, Ozil when he was at Arsenal. Um, that was for Leicester. When we drew, I think yeah. we drew one all at home in the first season of the Premier League. Who was, um, I know he, he's, he's, he's labelled now a lazy player. No, he was great so though that good. season, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he was special. I remember playing against him thinking, 
I can't get near him. He was playing one or two touch. He was a he's a of where what angle was coming from. I, I just thought, yeah, he was he was on that day in an individual game. He was the best player I ever played against. Uh, Dean, ask a sort of variation on that. He says, "Who was the most difficult player you had to ever play against, and why?" Um, I'd probably say Erzul again, just yeah. just for the fact that he just made my life so difficult, and he, he he just tired me out because I was trying to get close to him, trying to win ball off, and trying to get back into shape. He was moving me around. He was taking me into places that I didn't want to go as a central midfield player. Um, and I, I remember just coming off that pitch, happy that we drawn on one all, but I was exhausted. I was shattered just because of him. Yeah, he, he turned you around. Um, Andrew asks a question, and again, poignant at the moment, but he says, what are your thoughts on Vichai and now Tops as he's taken over? What, what was it like working underneath that sort of leadership from the top while you were at Leicester? Amazing. Um, it's an amazing family. Um, the club's so lucky to have them as owners. Um, really genuine people. Um, they love the football club. They want the best for the football club. And my time, um, I really enjoyed them. They were close to the players. Um, they always um, respected the players' opinions, wanted the players' opinions. Um, and they've just done so much for the football club. Um, and if you ask any of the players when I previously or now, much respect for them. I think Tot will continue um, the values of his father and of the family, and the club will just go strength to, from strength to strength with the training ground. I think I hear rumours that they're going to redevelop the stadium. Um, they'll keep investing in the in the squad because they're ambitious, and I just think they're just. And one thing they are, they're just so genuine and nice people. Um, so yeah, I had a, I, I, the players have such a strong relationship with them. They're they're amazing people. I think, Dean. I think I just want to let you know that you're a big Leicester fans' favourite. Loads and loads of comments coming in here, uh, and fans really appreciated your time with us at the club. Tom, this is going to be pretty much the last question, uh, so I can let you crack on with your night. Tom's asking, uh, and I think a lot of Leicester fans would love to see you come back to Leicester in some sort of shape or form. Would you like to go into coaching or be a manager? Not necessarily at Leicester, but anywhere. Is that is that possibly on the radar? It's a full process, yeah. I mean, I've started my coaching badges um, and I've always been one of those people that I've been encouraged to go into coaching. Yeah. Um, potentially because people see that I have the qualities maybe to do it. Um, I don't know. It's it's an option and it's, it's something that I've thought about. It's something that I love football. I love being around players. I love the training ground. I love training. I love seeing players develop. So... It's an option, but whether the only thing, whether it sits with family life, I know, because I think with coaching and as a manager, you have to be so dedicated, so focused on your role that your your, your family almost take a backward step. And I'm, I'm that's the only that's my only question mark over it. Whether I'm willing to whether I'm willing to sacrifice my family life for going into coaching, um, but I don't know. We'll see. You've certainly seen it, obviously, and you've worked with some great managers um, throughout your club, some fantastic managers. Um, so you've probably seen the pain and the gain that they have to go through, Dean. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's one of those, it's, it's a really rewarding role if you get it right, because you're, you're, you're leading a group that are successful. And I, could, I see managers when I've been, I've been lucky enough to be in a, a lot of promotion teams and the successful teams. So I see the rewards that you get, but also there's a downturn of it that sole responsibilities on the manager, the coaches to try and get motivate players to try and uh, improve players. So it's a difficult role, but if you get it right, I can imagine that it's as close as you're going to get to being a player. Brilliant. Thanks, Dean. Can I just say thanks from all the Leicester fans for your joining us tonight and keep safe and we'll keep watching those fitness videos. Thank you. My pleasure. No problem. Right. Look after Brilliant. yourself. Thanks so much. That's Dean Hammond who joined us tonight all the way. Um, we had a few technical issues and I'm adding Tom back in now. Tom, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you, mate. I'm so sorry that I couldn't add you and Jamie and Chappers back in when Dean was on. There was some sort of gremlins in the system. It seemed to work just about while it was just me and him. So 
I've got a couple of your questions to him anyway, Tom. Hey, it's, it's live. That's what we do it for. And, you know, it's uh, once again, it's, it was, I think it, Neil and Eddie was a fan's favourite because his work rate, his determination, uh, he, and generally just an all-round very, very nice guy, as we've just seen from the live chat tonight with him. And uh, what can we say? He's uh, he's He can't speak highly enough for the football club and where we're at and where we're going. So, uh, fair play, and it's great to have on. But you say it's live streaming. We have these problems now and then, and that's uh, the internet for you. He was, Tom. I mean, it's interesting, isn't it? it? It seems like fans, and I know I'm like this, if you see a player putting in maximum effort around the pitch and really looking like they're bothered, um, it, it counts for a lot, doesn't it? It's something you can't... I know I know. sublime skill is like a gift for some players, but you think just... I mean, he said there, he explained to us about he was very hot on the fitness, he trained really hard, it was one thing that he could really work at. But I think that always goes down with, well with fans. And he was with us for three... In fact, he was probably with us for four and a half years with a, a couple of loan outs, but fans' favourite. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think, you, you know, early in the interview when he was talking about uh, Nigel Pearson and changing things, bringing in Gary Taylor Fletcher, Phillips and himself, and, you know, moving on the likes of Beckford, who, you know, he wasn't a fan's favourite. He was a lazy player. You know, players Don't get me little... started on Jermaine Beckford, Tom. <laughs> uh, do, no. uh, please, I, I hope, uh, talking of Jamie... Uh, Jamie's back in here. Hello, hello, Devil are we? Yeah, yeah, go on. Minute, that was a good interview as well, that was, wasn't it? It was yeah. fucking points there. Tom, go on, you were saying. Yeah, you know, I just think that shows you what Nigel brought him into the club for. He wanted that positivity around the club. You know, that's why he brought in those three players and shipped out players that he didn't want to at the football club anymore. The likes of Matt Mills, big earners. And he didn't want the flash guys around the football club. And if you look about where he went after that with the Pearson signings, they were players who would only get in that team if they work hard. And, we, you know, Mara's at the start didn't get in that team. Dino was getting in the team because he worked hard. And eventually Mara's had to, you know, pull him socks off and, you know, learn that. And if you listen to his, you know, chat about Cambiasso and someone at Dino's age who could have go, nah, do you know what? I know what I'm doing. It's good to see someone who's still willing to learn at his age and take it in from, you know, a professional who won it all really near enough at the top level of the game Esteban can be I say so just listening there you can just see how professional he is from start to finish yeah Jamie sorry Every, everything Tom oh, sorry everything Tom's said <laughs> totally to, totally agree with him he, he came in for his experience like he said him Gary Taylor Fletcher who, uh, Kevin Phillips Nigel Pearson knew what he wanted he wanted the experience for that league and he did it he did the job and then when we went to the Premiership, he had to reevaluate everything, and we had to start again from it, and it worked well. So yeah, I think I think he'd done a fantastic job for us the short time he was here. Oh, well, he was like we were just saying, to, uh, Jamie. He was probably here for for nearly five seasons, on and off with loans, and then coming back. He he almost, to be fair, Tom, I would have thought Dean Hammond was was he was really on the edge of being in that Premier League side. You know, he just didn't quite. Maybe well, just didn't quite happen for him, did he? I, I know he played in some of the greatest escape season. Yeah, I mean, he played quite a few games that greatest escape season. But then I suppose Claudio came in. If you look at Claudio, he wanted that. As we could say, we brought Kante in. No one knew much about this little little French kid. And what a player he turned out to be. And I suppose Kante on the training pitch is probably moving 10 times as fast as Dino could on a pitch. And that's probably why he got the nod in there. But do you know what? It's, not, it's nice to see another player who doesn't take... Uh, of we've seen in the past arrogance against him why aren't you picking me he just got on with it then got the opportunity and took the loan spell same when he left at Southampton to come to us he knew he wasn't going to play he wanted to come and try and play it's good to see you know the older generation still do that I think there's a lot of kids in the game who don't realise how important it is to be a team player it's not all about playing every single week It'd be nice too when you're that good but that team ethic is mainly what gets you by in the, you know, being a top top player for me Jamie, come on then, talk us through what have we got going on tomorrow? What have we got going on tomorrow? Tomorrow, as long as there's no technical issues, we have got Simon Grayson at 12 o'clock. A lunchtime chat with Simon Grayson. And then Wednesday night, we've got Paul Kincheski at half past seven as well. So we've got a pretty good week coming up. Tom, if you can join us for either of those, if you're not working, which you probably are. Um, if you can sneak, sneak out for two minutes tomorrow at 12 feel free to join us I'm not working at the moment mate. I don't go back till next week now so fantastic alright it's quids in thanks Tom for joining cheers, us tonight man. I'll let cheers, Tom go cheers Tom uh, thanks Jamie as well for sorting that one out not tonight not a problem not a problem um, 
we'll see you soon. I'll let Jamie go as well. Uh, thanks for all your comments. Some great comments in and some great questions. Um, Adam, Adrian, sorry, same a most enjoyable show again. Thank you. Uh, Mark Charles is saying Beckford was okay. Mark, bless, you're the one who, who doesn't rate uh, Ben Chilwell and you're saying Jermaine Beckford was okay. You obviously weren't away at Peterborough, the game I was away with Jermaine Beckford at. Um, Andy Meadows is saying, can we get Jermaine Beckford on? No, Andy, we can't. Well, if we could, I certainly couldn't uh, hold that interview with him. Uh, Peter says another great... Uh, interview lads thanks for that peter and um thanks for all your comments that are coming in here so many comments as ever now listen um chappers always tells me off for not plugging the socials so here's the graphic follow us we're at leicester fan tv wherever you're following us if you're watching this you're probably following us that's my logic so if you're on youtube subscribe if you're on facebook like the page but you probably already have if not like and share it that'd be great um twitter retweet us and the same on periscope give us a love heart that would be amazing um so from me phil leicester fan tv final thank you to all the people who help make leicester fan tv pop up possible pop up sound like a good granville there at the end i'm losing it uh thanks a lot for watching we'll see you tomorrow at 12 for simon grayson i'm looking forward to simon grayson i'll see you tomorrow cheers guys